the Partridge here and Chalisa and Gowie. You're up for this? Yeah, sure. It's a real motorcycle. He's going to jump right over here on the shield. We need to get you in Whatever. your gear. Here, put on this uh, protective suit. I mean, it's okay. not really protection, sure. but it'll keep you closer. Sure. You put that on there. We've got Gary and Chalisa are already out in position. Right there. Oh, uh, uh, Alan, if you... You can put it on over your clothes. Okay. Just put it on over your clothes. Ewan's good on the bike. Looking good, Ewan. Alan Partridge, that is young. You're good to go. If you want to get down there, lie down now. Next to them now. Okay. You know what? We were going to have CeeLo as well, but he needs to get ready for the music. So why don't you come over here a bit? Let's just move you a bit more. Oh, that's along there. <laughs> Make it a little bit more interesting. So join me in part three when you and McGregor will be jumping over our guests on a motorbike. Don't go away. Okay. Welcome back. Welcome back. Thanks for joining us. Now, before the break, uh, we were setting this up. Ewan McGregor said he would join us on the sofa tonight, but he would jump over our other guests on a motorbike by way of an exciting entrance. As you can see, we're all set. We've got Gary Chalizio and Alan Partridge lying down over there. Ewan, you're good on the bike there. You ready to go? Okay. Let's do it. Three, two, one, go! How about that? Wow! Amazing! An amazing dance. You and McGregor, ladies and gentlemen, you and coming over and doing a fantastic piece of stunt work in the tank. That's an exciting start to the interview. Thank you for doing that. Wow. My pleasure, my pleasure. Yeah, feel good. Look great. Look great. Let's start that one. Let me take that up here. Yeah. No, I'm oh, I'm right. Right. Yeah. that way there. You're in the drag out. You're in the drag out. You're in the that was right. And thank you, of course, to uh, Gary and Talisa and uh, uh, Alan Partridge for taking part of those vlogs. Oh, uh, uh, great to meet you, really. Huge, huge. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Is that okay? You're cool. Yeah, right? fine. I don't worry about this. No. <laughs> um, nice uh, to meet you, too. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah really. I'm a huge fan of, I've got to say, uh, the, I, th I actually think the first three Star Wars films are nowhere near as good as the three that you were in. That's yeah. interesting. And I know yeah. I'm, I'm probably the only person who thinks that. <laughs> Okay, what anyone says. No. Cheers. All right, cheers. 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 Alan Barkley, thank you. What a, a brave man, if not necessarily a very clever one. How about that for an entrance by a superstar actor on a show riding on a bike of people? Ewan McGregor, that was fabulous. What Thanks. a great start. Because we know, we know from having seen on TV, I know you love your motorcycling. I you do. do enjoy it. It's a hobby, it's a pursuit of yours. I do, I love it, yeah. You I love it. I'm not allowed to do it when I'm working. There's an insurance clause that uh, means that I'm not su not supposed to ride a motorcycle while I'm making a movie. You came, I don't. Off, it, you came off it once, in, I think in Scotland you came off one pretty badly once, didn't you? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yes. It was, with my, yes, it was a bad, it was a sad story. It was the first ride I'd ever had with my father who, who learnt to ride a motorcycle after me. And um, we went for about 300 miles and at the very end of it I came off really badly in front of him. But you were okay? You were... I was alright, yeah. But he shit himself. And my, my brother, <laughs> my, my brother who was, um, I think he was in Iraq, and a few days later, he read on the front page of one of the tabloids that I'd had a 180 mile an hour crash. <laughs> you know? And he was like, oh my God, what happened? But anyway, probably yeah. 28 miles an 28 hour. 28 miles an hour. And, yeah. and your father's pants bore the brunt of yeah. the force of the shock. It yeah. certainly did. Uh, you won't believe this when I tell you something here, but can you believe that Ewan McGregor is 40 years old? No. You, you look... You, you look about 28. You look. Oh, you're, you're very kind. Thank you, you. Have you had any work done? Have you tightened anything up, or have you had the neck done? Or pulled Only behind the no, ears? Nothing or? above the neck. Nothing above the no. neck. <laughs> Just, uh, I had my ball sack done a little bit. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> what was that? Was that, was I, was that, that I was getting a bit droopy. But was that the was that the Botox injection you had down there? No, I had that... it actually cut and re-stapled on. Yeah. <laughs> it's called a scrotolectomy. Yeah. <laughs> and it's not cheap either. But fun. But my balls look great now, so it's good. <laughs> You could eat your dinner off his balls, that's yeah. pretty much. Nice. Um, you had a, a bit of a wild period when you were first successful or not? Because now I know you're pretty calm. You, you don't drink at all, you don't, you don't go but crazy. I haven't done for a long, long time. Uh, no, not for 11 years or something. I did, you know, like anyone else, it was the 90s and I was quite... So you had a wild period, uh, yeah. but it wasn't too crazy or were there periods where you didn't know where you were? No, it had... was quite crazy sometimes. Okay. But not, not, uh, not out of the ordinary. So I mean, I wasn't alone, you know. It was during that kind of a post-train spotting phase where um, Oasis were huge and Blur, and it was the mid '90s, and the Brit, you know, Brit, it was very cool to be young and British, and, and especially and to be young British and a star in possibly the hippest movie of the time. Because right, trains, that yeah, must was, have been yeah. craziness. So it was an amazing time, and I and I enjoyed myself a lot. But it just got to the point; it wasn't any real drama about it. it just got to the point where I I couldn't keep it all 
you know, I was, I was married, I had a kid, I was trying to, I had a good career, and, and I was trying to be a very good drinker as well. So it was just the, it was the best one to go. You and, you know, you've got one of those careers where you do a, a lot of work here in the UK, kind of sometimes smaller movies, indie type movies. I know your, your new movie is, I guess, a smaller piece. Small film, yeah, Small Perfect film. Sense, which uh, is coming out next Friday. October the 7th it comes right. out. Um, well, let's talk about that now. Now, yeah. please, I was going to talk about other stuff first. Uh, it's, a, it's a very strange, very bold, very memorable premise for a movie. D describe it for people. Set it up. Well, it's a, it's a, a love story, essentially, set against the backdrop of um, the series of epidemics that, that hit humankind, the whole of the world. I'm struck by these ep epidemics where the human race starts to lose its senses one by one. So everybody across the world experiences, like, a moment of extreme rage, and afterwards they've lost their sense of... The first one to go is the sense of smell. And uh, this happens all, all around the world till the whole of humankind has lost its sense of smell. Then there's another one which is the sense of taste, hearing, and so forth. And um, I play a chef, so once the sense of smell and taste go, you know, we're a bit stuffed. Um, but I'm also an optimistic chef, and, uh, and, and I decide that we can carry on and people will still want to, you know, go out and enjoy each other's company, and so we start cooking in a very different way. And Ava Green, who's a very beautiful actress, who I play opposite in the love story, is an epidemiologist. Now, is there such a thing? There is. It's somebody who studies epidemiology. Well, I... <laughs> I'm so pleased that I said it right the first time. I had to say it again. <laughs> oh, dear. There we are. So this is uh, Perfect Sense. It's out all over the UK on October the 7th. Have a look at this. I'm... Woof. <laughs> How do you prepare for a movie like that in which losing your sense of smell or, or sight or taste, they're pretty big steps for a character in a movie. Yeah. Do you prepare for that? Do you try and prepare yourself by experiencing that, you know, bit, blindfolding yourself? Well, it's a difficult one, really. The hardest one to do was um, hearing because in the scenes we played with each other, when you can't hear each other, it, we kept reacting to noises and sounds and so stuff. Just, you and would had, do that, yeah, we kept, I guess. We kept having to remind each other, you, can't, you couldn't hear me say that or... Because the idea is we can still make noise, or you might try to make noise as, as a yeah. human, but, but the other person wouldn't be able to hear it, so... You kind of know going in that these kind of movies aren't going to be... They're not going to be blockbusters. Maybe not, yeah. Maybe not. Yeah. But maybe. If enough of you go and see it and then tell your friends... <laughs> I guess it's as simple as that. Yeah, you know what you never they, know. We never know. I mean, no. you want people to see it, you want people to see your work, and you yes. want people to see that film, but... No, no, I just love... I, I mean, I just love stories, yeah. really. And I, and I don't have a favourite... I suppose... The smaller stuff is nicer. You know everybody on the crew. Yeah. Whereas on a big film, there's like maybe five or six hundred people on the set. And you, don't, you don't really know who anyone is, and it's a bit less personal. It must be really weird, though, on a film like the Star Wars movies, where you go, not only is it a huge production, and there's a legacy, but also some of the actors aren't even there. They're I mean, you're, there, you're yeah. performing about against, yeah. you know... And I had less creature. and less as we went along. I don't know if they just didn't like me, or... or I, think <laughs> I think it's true to say they didn't like me. And um, the, as we went along, I had less and less people to work with. By, <laughs> by the third one, they sent me off on some chase through Gal and I can't even remember where I went. Yeah, yeah. Some, somewhere, yeah. Tatooine or somewhere. Yeah, it wasn't chasing Tatooine. Uh, no? No. Well, you probably know where it was. I do know. O off I went on my own, and I spent three months in a you green state. You were riding a giant lizard. Oh, yes, that's right, I did. Well, when you were filming the giant... That looked a bit like your desk, yeah. in reality. But, but so you were riding on something like this? I, I, I rode something like your desk. So you were sitting on something like this and... Yeah. Yeah. The, 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 the worst moment for me <laughs> was the very end of this whole big Star Wars trilogy. I deliver the baby. Who is it I deliver? It's... You, uh, I deliver uh, Luke, Luke Skywalker, Luke, yeah. right? To Uncle Owen and Aunt Peru. And hold on, hold on. Have you seen your films? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> It's quite a long time ago, and it is difficult to follow. Yeah, so okay. I arrived on set to deliver the baby, right? And I had some friends there, and I said, come on, this is a big moment. I'm, I'm delivering Luke it's Skywalker to Uncle Peru, Aunt Peru, and Uncle Owen. I'm, I'm delivering... <laughs> I'm deli it's a big moment, this. Yeah. Come and see. So I walked down the set, my mates are behind the, the monitors there with George and whatever, and there's a green box, like this, like, just like this bit, right? And it's green, and the whole set is green. And I come on with a... Plastic baby wrapped in a towel. <laughs> and I'm like, this, where's my... I arrived on a lizard or something. I went, where's my thing? Where's the thing I arrive on? And they went, there it is. <laughs> well, I had to get off it and stuff. So this is what I had to do. With my friends watching and George there, I was like this. <laughs> <laughs> it didn't move or anything. There, no, there was no gimbal. I went like this. And then I had to go like this. Oh... <laughs> Oh, you know. I went over and gave them the baby, right? And, and I gave them the baby to Uncle Peru, Aunt, Aunt Peru. 
Uncle, no, Uncle Owen and Aunt Peru was on a big hill there, a green man. Yeah, it's waving. And, and, and she gives a wee look to Uncle Owen. And then I hear George's from the background going, Look at the moons! Look at the moons! <laughs> and everyone goes like this, because no one, <laughs> nobody knows where they <laughs> are, the moons. And, uh, and then I'm walking back to my block. <laughs> and I didn't know if he'd turned round or not, you know. So I just got back on and I went like that. <laughs> Well, that's a marvellous, marvellous anecdote. <laughs> and you know, that makes sense. That was it. Well, I didn't know why you rode him off backwards at the end. <laughs> you know, we're going to take a break, uh, but I've got lots more I want to ask you. I know you've got a lot more you want to give. There's an awful lot more uh, I've got to give. Don't go true. away. You and McGregor will be here. We have music from CeeLo Green coming up after this. <laughs> Welcome back. You and McGregor is still here, ladies and gentlemen. And we have CeeLo Green coming up to play at the end of the show right over there it's a great track um one thing that i've always admired about you is the fact that you, you, you you're very comfortable with your own skin with nudity in films when, when the part demands it you also seem very comfortable playing gay men yeah and you're a straight man yes um but you seem very comfortable you played a lot of gay men uh, from from my perspective very convincingly i've never found it that much of a problem i don't mind it i, I mean you don't look forward to it or you like no, you I sometimes don't, look forward to it? i mean I don't. if you found a man attractive i i think you probably find me quite attractive most Did people you? <laughs> Did you ever ki did you kiss a man? I've never kissed a man knowingly. Do, do you want to kiss me now? <laughs> come on, go. No, no, come on. Come on. I don't know whether I'm ready for. Well, I'm a kiss. I'll be all right. I'll let, on the cheek? No, no, on the lips. On the lips? Yeah. Okay. I'll tell you what. Okay. Okay. Hold on. I'll do it. I'll do it on my turn. Okay. Okay. I tell you what, I can do it, but for me, if I was acting, I would need to think of a lady. And I, can I make you a tiny bit more like a lady? <laughs> Teresa, no. let me borrow that, because I think if you're looking a little more, you know... No, no, I think she has to put it on. Oh, OK. I don't want you to put it on. I don't want to wear any, because I'm going to be... This is I'll for me, this helps me psychologically, because I can then think of you as a beautiful, <laughs> short-haired Scottish lady. <laughs> I'm saving this as a treat. I leave you lovely ladies to it. Thank you, Felipe. Can I be honest with you? Stand up. Can I be honest with you? That's quite a lot worse. <laughs> no. Ladies and gentlemen, that was a voyage of discovery for me as much as anything, uh, and it was a playful moment for you. And you're great to have you back. You too, really so much. You and McGregor, ladies and gentlemen. So good to have you. Thank you. Thanks to all my guests.